And what I mean by that is that the premiums are much lower than whole life insurance. So you can actually use this to put down towards debt and pay off your debts and get out of debt, okay? And then finally, this doesn't apply to most people watching this video, but business policies, term life insurance is great. So if you have like a key person uh, that's within an organization and they pass away, the organization or whoever the beneficiary is will realize that insurance policy. So let's talk about the cons of a month. This one's gonna cost them $100 a month. If you just did a simple investment calculation, okay, let's just say we're getting 8% in the market over 20 years, because that's what this term policy is gonna be for, you're gonna end up with two completely different numbers. This $93, the difference between the 100 and the seven, okay, so $93 at 8% over 20 years would get you, I believe it's, See, is a really smart, better than a normal bank account. And I use mine as a bank account to support all of my business, all of my investments. And you know what? That's also where I put my sleep all at night money. So if uh, there was a rainy day, if something bad were to happen, that's where I store that money that I can pull out and actually access it super, super easy. So friends, I hope that's helpful for you in understanding whole life insurance and understanding how to leverage cash value. If you don't know what it is, all you have to do is call up your carrier and say, how much in cash value do I have? Or so let's say income replacement. Okay. So if you're someone who has a family of four and you're making 50 grand a year, uh, you should typically uh, have something that covers about 10 to 12 times your annual salary. So in the event of your death, your spouse or whoever your beneficiary is can take that lump sum, invest it in the market, and hopefully live off the interest that would have been paid to you as your salary, okay? So this is also good for debt payoff. So in case you've forgotten, just a little bit of a reminder, when you set up a whole life insurance policy, it's not a term policy with a death benefit, whole life insurance has a death benefit and a living benefit, which means every month that you write that check, a little bit goes towards the death benefit, the rest of it goes towards building up cash value that you can access. Now, it's a very smart strategic bank. What I love about whole life insurance is that I'm generally earning dividends of 5% on my money when it's sitting in there, and sometimes more than that, which is fantastic because if you're thinking about starting a policy, what you really need to do, and even if you have an old policy and they don't let you take very much of it out, over the last decade, I've only found three people I implicitly trust to set up and design the right policy to support my investing. And I got a list of them in the link below. So if you click it, it'll direct you to my most trusted group that will actually set that up for you and they'll do a fantastic job doing it. And then you can be like me, smarter, more sophisticated, saving your money, earn insurance for, for a 20 year period. Okay, that's just how the premiums shake out and I'll get into that more in depth later. So term life insurance has no cash value. Okay, so you're not paying into any premiums you're not investing any money. So as mentioned before, let's use that $500,000 as an example. You pay a set amount per month. Let's just call it, I don't know, 20 bucks for that. It's probably gonna be a little bit more, but you pay 20, 30 bucks per month. You get this amount of coverage, whatever that coverage is, class. So if your cash value policy is like, let's call it 50 grand. If you borrow against that to take out money, you have to pay a percentage on the money <laughs> You're basically going to a loan shark, okay? You're paying a percentage on your own money. Does that make sense? You've saved and saved and saved and contributed that fat premium every month. Now, if you want to take out money against this, you have to pay a percentage to borrow your own money. Does that make sense? So let's get into some of the cons of the whole life insurance. And so in my policy, I texted my buddy Garen and I said, buddy, I need a hundred grand. Two days later, the money was sitting there. I used it. And for this situation, I just needed to prove some collateral. The collateral was to basically show good faith on another project that I was doing. Once they saw that I was 100,000 liquid in the bank versus my policy, they gave me the thumbs up. I took the 100 grand. I popped it right back in my account and it had served its purpose. Now I gotta tell you right now, I love whole life insurance but most insurance at one point or another all throughout our lives. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the differences between term and whole life insurance. 
Before I get into that, however, I'm actually excited to announce that I did decide to make this a sponsored video. Today's sponsor is Simply Safe. It's an excellent home security system that's completely wireless. And the only reason I'm recommending it is because I use it myself. If I didn't use it myself and like, know, and trust it, I would not make this a sponsored video. Okay, so what is term life insurance? Uh, $52,917 in the market over 20 years. This, if you want to invest at like one and a half percent, which is what whole policies typically return, one and a half to two point two percent, after fees, commissions, you know, inflation, all that stuff, you're going to end up with typically twenty five thousand nine hundred and eighty three dollars. Okay, so that's a big difference. That's basically a uh, twenty eight thousand dollar difference. So with all sorts of free tools, if you go to my website, chriscrone.com, so you can get free copies of my books or you can, um, you know, grab free calculators on how to build wealth and when you're going to retire, or you can, you know, do free breakthrough with me in my breakthrough app, or most importantly, join me at one of my live fully immersive events. They're generally four days long. And what I'm doing is I'm training you to think like a multimillionaire. Frankly, I'm teaching you how to think like a billionaire. They think different, they process different. I'm gonna teach you how to be a much happier human being along the way. Okay, term life insurance provides coverage typically for a set period of time. And most people go with 20 to 30 years on this, okay? You can go less, you can go more. It all depends on what you want and what suits your needs. So if you or your spouse passes away during this time here, you are then paid the benefit of whatever the policy is. So if the policy is worth, let's call it $500,000, um, you croak within these 20 to 30 years of whenever the policy. For my guy, I just shoot him a text. I'm like, hey, send me a check for 30 grand, send me a check for 200 grand, whatever it is. And he'll generally say one of two things. He'll either say, Chris, would you like me to send it in snail mail and take 10 days? Or do you want me to have it wired to you? It's up to you how you want to do it. It's not the most convenient bank because I make a phone call and then the money gets sent to me, but that works just fine for me. Now the money is sitting in my account and now I can use it to support a business, start a business, invest in real estate, and do real smart maneuvers. I came up insurance, that's the whole point of getting insurance, just to get your money back that grew at a very poor rate that 1.5 to 2.2 percent. So it sounds like I've been talking a lot of smack about the whole life policy. There are a couple different benefits here. That cash value portion is non-taxable as long as it doesn't exceed the total premiums that you paid, okay? So if you paid, let's just call it 100 grand in premiums, as long as this cash value isn't above 100 grand, it's not taxable. Anything above that 100 grand is taxable, okay? With all that being said, I hope that this was just a good primer. There's obviously different policies, different companies, different coverage amounts, all that stuff that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, I'm not talking about health, age, things like that. I just wanted to give you the big open facts about the difference between whole life insurance and term life insurance. So I hope this video was valuable for you. Um, in the middle class, I'm definitely gonna be um, getting term life insurance once I grow a family. Um, there's really no reason for me to get it right now at this point, even though I can like I- Insurance carriers, and more importantly, most insurance agents, they don't know how to set up these policies the right way. It's kind of a travesty because if you wanna be able to put money in and take it out, the insurance company will pay very low commission on that. So your insurance buddy, unfortunately, is usually incentivized to say, let's do the policy this way, and then in maybe four or five years or eight years, you can pull some money out of it because they really don't want you to touch it. That's what allows them to have a much higher commission. In the end, it's important for you to access your money. A whole life insurance policy. The first five, 10 years going towards a majority of the death benefit, the commissions and the fees, you can't choose what percentage that goes to the cash value. It's basically whatever their policy says and whatever those underwriters and analysts have decided. So um, the thing is you can actually, the only way to get this money right here, the cash value, is to cancel the policy and uh, surrender your policy. So you lose the death benefit and then they'll cut you a check for whatever that cash value was. So you're losing your insurance. In this video, we're gonna talk about the differences between term life insurance and whole life insurance. So insurance is one of those things in life that's pretty much necessary because, well, life happens. I could finish recording this video right now, go for a bike ride and get hit by a car, and that's that. Whiteboard finance is over. Even though I'd like to think that my audience would create a, you know, Facebook memorial page and, you know, share my videos into eternity, but we all know that probably wouldn't happen. So the fact is, is that we're all eventually going to need life here. 
So the cash value is pretty much what gets accumulated and what these salespeople, the sales agents or the insurance agents try and sell you on. It's kind of like the savings component or the investment component of a whole life cash value policy, okay? So when you pay your premium, the money that you pay, remember this uh, seven and hundred bucks a month, Obviously, a big part of that is going towards actually funding the death benefit for like the first five to ten years, okay? Also, where these putting greater returns on your money and protecting your money. All the things that a smart investor and a smart human being is actually looking for. Best wishes. Hey, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I made it just for you. And most of these videos I make are based on your comments. So if there's a video you haven't seen on my channel out of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, then comment on it below. It gives me ideas to let me and my team uh, know what we want to make videos on that will best support you. Bottom line is, we're here to help you become financially free. A couple last things for you to think about. I've got, it's not going to get me rich, but I feel way more responsible than letting my money sit in a bank. You get my meaning earning a half and nothing percent. The second thing is my money's untouchable when it's in there, which means it is the only unlitigatable policy on the planet. It's the only place you can put money where no one can touch it. Government can't touch it. No one else can touch it either. So I like that. Third, most importantly, is that I get all these awesome tax benefits, which means I get to grow my money tax-free in there. So when I pull it out, here's how you do it. You call up the custodian, the person that you have the account with. Funding it with, okay? So beneficiaries, here's the big kicker. Beneficiaries are only entitled to the death benefit when you pass away, okay? When you pass away, the cash value that you've built up this whole time, that's the whole thing that you've been being sold on this whole time, goes away, okay? This gets absorbed by the uh, life insurance company, believe it or not. This does not go to your beneficiaries, okay? So if you have a $500,000 policy, that goes to your benefits when you get older, obviously you have less time to live, meaning the policy has a higher chance of being paid out, which means that um, the numbers have to work for the insurance company. So that was the cons of term life insurance. Let's get into whole life insurance. So what is whole life insurance? So whole life has three components that we need to talk about, and this is what differentiates it from term. The first one are the premiums that you pay. So there's both premiums, obviously, in the term. That was the $7 benefit. It's not going towards the cash value. And then finally, the big kicker that I've mentioned a couple times now is that the cash does not go to your family. So I'll draw a little family here. It goes back, it's absorbed back by the insurance company, okay? So the whole thing with life insurance is that it's expensive and it's probably one of the worst financial products out there in my humble opinion, okay? Because it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, it's not supposed to be an investment product. It's supposed to be an insurance versus the 100. So there has to be a reason why the whole is so much more. Why is it 100? So the premiums are the first component. The second is the death benefit. Okay, this is just what it sounds like. This is the amount that you're paid upon your death. So let's just call it 500 grand for easy numbers. And then finally, this is the kicker. This is what differentiates whole versus term. And that's the cash value. And I'll put a dollar sign. 5%, so now I'm looking to do like in my real estate earn 20% or maybe it's 25%. When I'm done with my real estate and I pull it back out, guess what I'm gonna do? Whew, I'm gonna pay my policy right back, fill it right back up. And now I've built a shelter because all my money sitting in there is growing tax-free again. Isn't that awesome? It's fantastic. So let me give you kind of a, a real-world example. So I recently did a deal and I short-term needed to show $100,000. And, and that's it. You're not building anything. You're not investing that money. You're not making any interest on that money. Think of it like car insurance. You're just paying a set amount per month to get a certain amount of coverage, okay? So this is actually not worth anything until you actually need it, okay? But that's actually the whole point of insurance, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. So the pros that come with term life insurance is that it's a great choice for people that are looking to, um, how do I say this, replace their income. Premiums are going in the beginning. They're not going towards your cash value, which um, you're led to believe. A very small amount is going towards the cash value. The a majority of these premiums are going towards the commissions of the salesperson. So that's why they always try and push whole versus term. Uh, they're also going to the administrative fees of actually running the policy. And they're also going, like I said, to actually fuel or fund the death benefit. Okay. So you're led to believe that, 
oh, if you have a cash value term life insurance. So this is one of the biggest ones. It's costly to renew. The reason for that is if you use the example of the 30 year old that gets a 30 year policy and he still needs it, say like he's still in debt or whatever, his finances aren't in order and he still needs to work. If he goes to renew this policy at 60 years old, it's obviously going to be a lot more expensive than when he was 30. When you're 30, you have a lot more life to live. You're generally healthier. There's less health risk when you pass away. That goes back to the insurance company. So uh, the other thing is, is that the premiums are guaranteed and also the cash value is non-taxable and you can actually um, borrow against that cash value if you want to. So we talked about the non-taxable unless it exceeds that amount. Um, borrowing against it, so <laughs> uh, I've actually watched Dave Ramsey talk about this years ago, it's kind of funny. Um, borrowing against your cash value policy is like going to a payday lender of the middle currents. Some of the cons are that it's obviously very expensive, okay, so if this was a restaurant I'd give it four dollar signs. Um, next is that it's very inflexible, again we talked about those premiums not being able to choose where they go. Um, again, it's covering commissions, fees, all that stuff. I just typed in, or I just wrote premiums. premiums. Uh, next is the cash value accumulation is slow. Remember the first five to ten years, it's going towards the death benefit. Is your beneficiaries, it's usually your spouse or your children or whoever you assign as the beneficiaries, will get this payout, period. So the nice thing about term life insurance is that it's very affordable, okay? It's actually much more affordable than whole life. So typically, um, this works out to be for every $7 in term life insurance for, let's call it a 20 year coverage period, you're probably gonna be paying closer to $100 in whole life fisheries, okay? The cash value does not. That goes back to the insurance company. So all this money that you saved this, this uh, $93 difference between the seven and the hundred, that $93 difference that you've been saving month after month after month after month, it does not go to your beneficiaries. It goes back to whoever your provider is, okay? The other thing is with whole life insurance, you have no choice in how the life insurance company applies the premium, okay? So when we talked about the premium, so very quickly, let's just go over a quick recap of the pros of the whole life insurance and then we'll do a quick recap of the cons, and then um, I'll get into a dollar comparison, if you will. So the pros of the whole life insurance is that you have coverage for life. It's not set to that 20, 30 years like we talked about in the term policy, okay? This is covered until the day you die, right? You can do that because, again, your family members aren't getting that cash value. I said I could get hit by a bus right now. Um, but if you got value out of this video, uh, share it with one friend, give an insurance product. You don't go to your car insurance and say, hey, I'll pay you more premium if you get me back 1.5% uh, over 20, 30, 40, 50 years. That would be stupid. So let's move on to a cost comparison example here very quickly. So say we have a 31-year-old guy that has a $100 a month budget to spend on insurance, okay? So he can get 125 grand in term, he can get 125 grand in whole. This one is going to cost them seven bucks a whole life insurance policy. You're going to make 10, 11 percent in the market. It's going to grow and it's going to be tax deferred, and that's going to be your money, right? Well, actually, that's incorrect. Um, after all the fees and all that stuff is said and done, you're typically averaging 1.5 percent on a whole life policy. Okay, let me repeat that. 1.5% to 2.2%. After you've paid into this death benefit for like five to 10 years, that cash value starts to build more and more based off the premiums that your 